Hello everybody, this is Know Your Mac on YouTube.com, and today I have another Cinema 4D tutorial for you, which is target cameras inside of R13. Uh, before R13, you really had to mess around with the cameras to make it follow an object. Basically what you had to do was add a specific tag to a camera. But now there's a specific camera called the target camera within R13. So it's pretty easy to use. I'm just going to show you basically how you can set it up. So basically, let's just say we have a shape here. And let's animate this shape. So I'll set a keyframe here at frame 0. And then go to like 85 or something like that. And just animate it all the way over there. Set another keyframe. And now basically it's just moving from one area to the next. Nothing really that big there. But let's just say we have a target camera. And what we want the camera to do is actually follow this square so that as the square moves, the camera moves with it. So to do this, it's actually very, very simple. Now the camera already comes with the camera.target.1. We don't actually need to use that. We can just click on this target expression tag and click on this little arrow all the way on the right next to where it says target object and you'll get this little question mark cursor and then just click on the cube and now if done correctly the target object will now say cube and now you can see if you watch the camera it's rotating and looking at the cube wherever it goes so if we go ahead and jump into that camera view and play this back you can see that we're actually watching the cube move so this is very very handy for animations it's not really that handy for anything else. Uh, I suppose you might be able to find a, a few uses for it, but you know, this is animation is really what this is mostly for. But you can see, no matter where we move this, the camera always stays with it, and uh, they're kind of linked together now. Uh, even if it's a different shape, the camera will always look at the middle of that object. So I hope this has been helpful to you and don't forget to subscribe for more Cinema 4D and Mac related tutorials.